All right. There we go. So let's take a look at question number 14. It just says match the IR spectra. Um, match the IR spectra to all of these isomers. You can see that everything here has an HDI of one. All right. Is there anyone that anybody was able to identify quickly? You can see the labeling here isn't the best, so maybe I'll improve it here. So we have this is A, E, B, C, and then that would make this one here D. So it's kind of a wacky order. Was anybody able to identify the alcohol, cyclopentanol, or sorry, cyclobutanol? Great, thanks, Savannah. Yeah, absolutely. This must be cyclobutanol here because I have the oxygen hydrogen stretching. Good. And then I also have the carbon oxygen stretch in the cyclobutanol. And I remember for an alcohol, the carbon oxygen stretch is going to be around 1250 to 1000. So if you look here, it's probably one of these guys. I'm just going to pick the biggest one here. And we'll say that's the carbon oxygen stretch from our alcohol. Good. Okay, so we've identified cyclobutanol. Um, are there any other ones? What else? Oh, there's two alcohols here, isn't there? All right, there's two alcohols. Did anybody find the second alcohol, the one with the alkene in it? That would be D, right? Absolutely, yes. So let's put the structure here on this one. And the reason why this one is a little bit different is because it's got an alkene in it, right? You do have the oxygen hydrogen stretching of the alcohol. You also have, we'll just circle this and say this is the carbon oxygen stretch, but then you also have the alkene stretching, right? And I might need to move this out of the way a little bit here to see the alkene stretching. So first of all, you can see the carbon-carbon double bond stretching at around 1630. So if this is 1500, this is 16, so this is 1630, this would be the carbon-carbon double bond stretch of the alkene. And then even tougher to see here, if we take the ruler and we draw a line at 3000, if we draw a line here, you can also see there's a hidden signal in here. That would be our sp2 hybridized carbon hydrogen stretching in there. So we can see the alkene functional group and the alcohol functional group in that compound, yes. If you notice everything, or sorry, not everything, but I noticed that one, two of the compounds have carbonyl groups in them, right? Two butanone has a carbonyl and then the aldehyde has a carbonyl. And if we look at A and B, they both have carbonyl groups in them, right? So this would be a carbonyl group here. And this is a carbonyl group here. But how do we differentiate between the two of these? The way that you differentiate between an aldehyde and a ketone is from the carbon hydrogen bond in the aldehyde. Okay, we call that aldehydic stretching. So we call this aldehydic, oops, CH stretching. And that comes out at 2750 and 2850 reciprocal centimeters and it's usually not very strong um, so if you look at a if we go to a and we draw our line at 3000 oops like this okay oops these two signals here that's the aldehydic ch stretching so this is oops that's this ch stretching right here so this is 27 or sorry, this one's at 2850, and this one here would be at 2750. Okay, so that's your aldehydic carbon hydrogen stretching. And so A must be the aldehyde. So A would be this compound. And that would mean that B, the only thing that it's got is the carbonyl. So it would be butanone. And then the last one is the ether. And you can see that you've got a few things with the ether because the ether has a vinyl group in it. So if we draw the structure of the ether, first of all, if you look at an ether, you have a carbon ox oxygen stretch between um, a thousand, what is it, a thousand and thirteen hundred, something like that. Yes, exactly. That's what it says in your table. 
So this would be the carbon oxygen stretch here. So this is your CO stretch for your ether. But then you also have the sp2 hybridized carbon hydrogen um, bond. So that would be this thing here, right? That's above 3,000. So this would be our um, this would be our uh, sp2 uh, hybridized carbon hydrogen stretching. And then finally for the for the double bond, again that comes out around 1630. So that would be one of these guys right here. This would be our carbon-carbon double bond stretch. And so we've identified all five of those compounds and we identified all of the signals. All right, let's take a look at one last problem. Match the IR spectra to the possible compounds. So they give you a whole bank of compounds here and then they give you a whole holy host of spectra. I'm gonna go through this one a little bit quicker. I'm not gonna identify every stinking functional group. Um, did anybody identify this, what functional group is found here in this one? This is exactly, thanks Kiana, that's the carboxylic acid. And so this one must be, this compound is called cyclopentane carboxylic acid. So this is our OH stretch here. This is our carbonyl. And then we have our carbon oxygen stretch here. You see we have an alcohol in the last one, and then we have an alcohol in the third one. Okay, and then we have two alcohols, yes, but one of them has a double bond in it. And if you look at the one on the bottom here, this last one, we have the OH stretch here, we have the carbon oxygen stretch here, but then we also have the carbon-carbon double bond stretching, and then we have the sp2 hybridized carbon hydrogen stretching. And so this one must be the one that has the um, alkene in it. So that would be this compound. And the one before, this would be um, the cyclopentanol here. This one, cyclopentanol, this guy right there. Um, let's work on the, the nitrile. So the nitrile is where you have a carbon-nitrogen triple bond. And if you look in the table, a nitrile has stretching that's around 2250. And the only thing uh, that has, so if you're asking why are there no aromatic overtones here, is that what you're asking for this one? Well, that compound's not aromatic, right? That's a cyclohexane. If it was aromatic, it would have one, two, three double bonds in it, right? So it's not an aromatic compound. It's just an alkane. Okay, cool. All right, so for the nitrile, we'd want to look for something that's got a signal at 2250. And if you go down here, all right, you see that you have something here that has a very strong nitrile stretch, oops, at 2250. And then like you were saying, Savannah, you definitely have the carbon-carbon double bond aromatic stretching here, so aromatic, right? And then you also have the overtones here. So these would be overtones. All right, so this compound is called benzonitrile. I'll put the structure here, so it's this compound. All right, um, yeah, and then you'd also have the sp2 hybridized carbon hydrogen stretching on the aromatic ring. All right, what else do we have? If we look at the next compound, it's got a carbonyl group in it, and there's nothing else in the compound. It's the only functional group in there, the only stretch of interest. So this must be this ketone. Um, that's on the, the list. And then we have three of them left. The one on the top must be, um, must have a, a triple bond in it. Son of a gun. Because you have, right, you have the triple bond stretch here for an alkyne, which comes out around 2150, 2100. And then also we have the SP hybridized carbon hydrogen stretching here. So that must be the one that has an alkyne in it. So it has to be this compound. So we'll scribble that one in here. So that's the only one that's an alkyne. Excuse me. If we look at the next one, one thing that I haven't mentioned that I haven't mentioned yet is if we have an ester, whenever you have an ester, you're going to have a carbonyl, but the carbon oxygen stretch for the single bond is almost as strong as the stretch for the carbonyl. So that's a dead giveaway that you have an ester. And there's only one ester, which is this compound. 
this guy here. And then also we have um, the carbon, car sorry, did I mislabel it? I did, I put the wrong one in the wrong place. So the carbonyl would be this stretch, okay? And then this one here, this is my carbon carbon double bond stretch over there, sorry. I mislabeled that one. Uh, and then this would be our SP2 hybridized carbon hydrogen stretching here. And I think that brings us to the last one. And the last one must be the amide. If you remember, the carbonyl of an amide has a really low absorbance. It's usually around 1640 reciprocal centimeters. And so that must be the only compound that's an amide. You can also see that we have um, the the NH2, right? This is our NH2 stretch here. You have two of them. And then you also have some aromatic stretching. So if I zoom in here, so anywhere between, you know, these things here must be carbon, carbon, double bond, aromatic. And there you go. That covers all of the compounds. So this one must be this compound, this guy here. And so there you go. We've identified everything in there. And that'll be a wrap for chapter four, 14. Uh, the last problems that I have on here, these come straight out of the textbook. So I'm not gonna go over those because you have the answers to those ones or the solutions already in the, um, in the solutions manual.